Hello, welcome to the hobby world of Dr. Mike. This is the third in a series of three videos regarding this air hockey table. In this video, we'll go over the electrical circuits, including schematics and the programming to make this game what it is. Enjoy. Here are some schematics I prepared for this video. We'll go through the main game cabinet circuits first. I've got six inputs to the processor. Two for the game select, two for the start. The game select and the game start push buttons have a normal open contact and normal closed contact. These contacts need to each change state before a new game is selected. This prevents contact, bounce, or light touch from allowing the game select to scroll through multiple games. Again, the game start requires both contacts to change state. We'll see how those contacts work now. We also have two inputs for the score. Every time the puck goes through the goal, it'll close a contact. Again, I put in a debounce timer of about half a second so that every time the puck goes through the goal, it only scores once and doesn't allow the contact bounce to ratchet multiple points. We use a 12 volt circuit. I have six volt lights put in series for the push buttons. Each of these contacts is represented as a switch. Completes the circuit through a one kilo ohm resistor and then it goes through an optical isolator. Then the optical isolator drives the pin. Here is the input driver. Yeah, it's ugly. We have two outputs. One output is for the infrared LED communications to the scoreboard. It's driven through one pin, which drives a MOSFET, which turns the infrared LED on and off. This infrared LED needs to be pulsed at 36 kilohertz so that the infrared receiver can determine it's an actual signal from the infrared LED and not background noise. Here is the infrared LED driver. I placed it on the main processor board. The blower output is driven through another pin, and again, it goes through a MOSFET, which completes the circuit, then go through an optical isolator. Then the optical isolator turns on another MOSFET, which then completes the circuit for a motor contactor. Then the contacts on the motor contactor will complete the circuit for the 115 kV into the blower motor. Here is the blower motor driver. Here is the main processor board that I made. It's got a lot of features in it. I was using it as a development board and threw it into the project. It works pretty well. I used an assembly code to program the processor. I find the assembly code is a lot more efficient, gives me a lot more control. This is where I pulse the infrared transmitter at 36 kilohertz. You've got initialized registers to find what registers are being used for what purpose. Then here's my setting loop. I sit here and loop indefinitely until something happens. You can see here I've got my inputs for settings and inputs for starting the game. We've got basically eight characters on the display, seconds, tens of seconds, minutes, periods, player scores, and here's where we set the games up. Here you can see I have the default set for a seven minute game. Then when you push the buttons, you scroll through to different games. Then this is where you start the game. Initialize the scores at zero. Of course you count up every time there's a score. I wait two seconds to start the blower and get it up to speed before the timer starts counting down. And then I've got a routine for each player every time the puck passes or it passed the goal. Here's the debounce time I talked about before. I ended up programming it for a 0.4 second wait for the debounce. Then at the end of the period, you ratchet the periods up, we wait a period of time so the players can change sides, and then it starts again. You've got timers in here, I've got maintenance routines for the timers. 
Here's where I transmit characters to the scoreboard through the infrared LED. The first nibble is the value of the character. The second nibble is the position. That would be time, period, and score. And here's the routine where I decrement the playtime. Let's go over the scoreboard circuits. First thing we have the infrared receiver, which is its own circuit driven by five volts. This capacitor to smooth out the voltage is very important. It won't work without that. The receiver output is then input to the processor's serial communications pin. I'm using seven segments for each display. Again, driven by its own port from the processor. The processor drives each segment to be displayed through a MOSFET, which is used to switch a PNP transistor on or off to complete the circuit to drive each segment of the display. I repurposed an existing circuit board for the infrared receiver. Here's the receiver capacitor that's very important to have across your voltage, voltage inputs, and signal to the processor. Here's the segment display driver. You can see the inputs from the processor. It goes through MOSFETs, got the transistor switches, and then outputs that go to each display face. Here is the display face. Got period, time, player, the other player. The segment driver plugs into the back of the board and basically drives segment buses to drive the segments on the displays. The MOSFETs for selecting display are on this board and they are wired directly to the wires that go to the processor. There's just a simple circuit to light some LEDs to separate minutes from seconds on the time. Here's the main processor board. Got power to and input from the infrared receiver. Here's the port to the segment driver. Here are the connectors to the display drivers. I've transposed the players so that when you're playing the game, your score is always on the left hand side. I repurposed a panel meter case for this application. The meter cards fit nicely into slots to support the cards and I use those to support my boards. The battery pack just lays on top. Here's the program for the display. It's fairly simple. You need to start off by initializing some registers, controllers, timers. Here you can see where I set different segments for characters that I want displayed. Here's the routine for sending characters to each segment display. And here's the routine where I take the 8-bit input Divide it into the two nibbles. The most significant is the position. The least significant would be the value or the character that needs to be displayed. And then I send the value to the appropriate register for the display.